Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching my channel as I explore the wide world of pens. And yes, it's been a couple weeks since I've done a Pen BBS video, so this one motivated me. I saw this on eBay and I said, mm, I don't have a 308 in snow. And the price was good. Here's the auction. But what really motivated me to pull the trigger and to purchase it is the nib. It is uh, a medium. You can see an M there at the very bottom. But it has snowflakes on it. Very appropriate. So that got me thinking about all the different nibs that I have from Pen BBS, and we're going to explore those, and we'll take a look at this pen, and maybe ink it up. Stay tuned. Well, I do make investments in interesting devices to help me explore my pens even more. So the other LED light I have has been a little bit erratic. So I bought this one on eBay. It arrived pretty quick. It was a U.S. purchase. My concern from looking at the auction was this end here is a little bit big, so it's not going to fit into a barrel like this. But I like the way that the switch is here because that's where I had an issue with my other LED lights. But much to my surprise and pleasure, this end unscrews and you get a small bulb which I think is perfect for exploring the inside of this resin. Does a nice job. It is fairly translucent, very consistent. Living in a northern climate, it is very much like fresh snow. And even with that piece removed, it won't fit into the barrel. But we can play it across the acrylic like we did the other LED. It's just something that will bring more enjoyment to my exploration of pens. So this is my current LED that I use and it has a very small end which fits into almost everything. The problem is this switch is just not consistent for turning it on and off and sometimes it'll strobe when it's on but it still does a good job and it does fit inside of this barrel which is nice probably far far down in the barrel yep there's a ledge down there which is what I think uh, Pen BBS put in there to keep the converter from rattling around nice design feature so now I have two lights to help me explore my pens so we're just going to do a quick look at three of the colors of Pen BBS. We'll give you the listings of the colors. So the bottom one here is the snow one, which I just got, which I said really reminds me of packed snow. The second one, which is also a 308, is ice. And then at the top here is a 456 in Dawn. Dawn has a little bit of other colors in it, but... A lot of similarities. I mean, you have this is a little bit more opaque. Ice has a little bit more transparency to it, and Dawn has a lot more transparency to it. For those that like this color, here's three examples. Here we are with four nibs that I feel represent the range of nib made by Pen BBS. Starting at the far left, we have the standard fine nib with a little bit of an upturn to the end. Next to that, we have the extra fine, which is difficult to find. Uh, this one came out of a uh, nib charm. Next to that is the rounded fine. Again, not a nib that's easy to find. Sorry for the puns. 
And next to that is this medium snowflake nib. The medium nibs are all pretty consistent, so I'm just putting this one in to show the tipping material at the end of the nib and how it differs from the other nibs. We're going to try to do some interesting video perspectives to try to give you a visual view of how these nibs are. The uh, display on my video camera is not good enough to see whether this is actually showing what I want to show. That definitely shows out of focus, but we'll try it again. Ah, that's better. So the upturned nib is at the far right or the bottom here. Next, that has the extra fine, the rounded fine, and the medium. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what these nibs look like visually. We're going to explore some of the other unique nibs that PEMBS makes. This is a good sampling of what they have. Here's another view so you can compare that tipping material. So we got extra fine, medium, rounded fine, and the standard fine. Again, just another view you may talk about what, how do you know it's an extra fine because it has that stylized E here versus the regular fine just has an F. We're going to explore some of the unique engravings, which I think are pretty much done with lasers, that make them unique nibs as far as the engraving goes. And these are three, four, seven, ones, a great pocket pen that they made. Two with a gold ring, one with a silver ring. I think you could order them either or in the early days when they came out. But they all have silvery nibs, so let's zoom in on those nibs. The one here on the left is the pig one, Year of the Pig, 2019. Next to that is Fireworks. And over here is that classic Amber is a Cat nib which they've consistently put on all the pens that are the amber resin. And yes, the clear one has fireworks engraved on it, and in the white one there's also some engravings representing the year of the pig. PenBBS has really done a lot to provide you with very collectible items which makes me as a pen collector have many choices. I mentioned the nib keychain, nib charm, however you want to refer to it as. And this is the uh, one way I know that the uh, extra fine nib was sold. Cedar and that great green. Let's just quickly take a look at how these are done. They're amazingly well made, and I think for the price, they're extremely reasonably priced because you get a great piece of resin, and you get a nib, the nib collar, everything else. As we can see, that's the standard round medium one. And there's the O-rings, etc. Again, an excellent package, very well done, and cost a few dollars. This one has a nib that we saw, but I just wanted to show you in the nib collar. And that's that extra fine one with the E down there, that stylized E in a script form. As we continue to explore the nibs that PenBBS uses, here we have a 355, which again was a limited edition one. I think this may have been the first 355 that I was aware of. And then we have a, another 355 and a 456. And this shows the two-tone nib in the two versions that it's made in. Let's zoom in on those. 
This nib is engraved with some holiday images and 2019, so it's another nib that's dated. And here is that 355 where it's a gold nib and it's silver here in that fine engraving. And on the 456, it's just the opposite where it's uh, silver for most of the nib and then a gold where that engraving scroll work is done. Both of these are fine nibs and you can see that F indicating they're the upturn fine nib that is pretty much on almost every pen. Just figured we'd look at the bodies of the pen just to see that it does have those nice snowflakes on the 2019 pen. And there's two varieties of smog. Smog, just every pen is going to be unique in how much white there is and how much clear there is. The 456 I really like. This is a pretty big blotch on the 355, but you fill it with ink, it looks nice. And here we have two of the newer interesting nibs. Obviously the Year of the Rat. There's the dopamine nib that was on the waves with the contrasting finials and section. And up here we have a gold 308, in the infinite uh, resin. And that has a gold standard fine nib. Let's look at them a little bit more closely. So the uh, Year of the Rat was definitely a, a nicely done nib. And here's that dopamine nib that was in that 456. And here's a gold tone nib, which is, I think, fairly rare. It was only in a few pens. And thankfully, I got this one in Infinite, which I certainly do like the resin. We'll scroll up and give you a look. And there's that gold trim on the 308. You may ask, does Pen BBS only use number six nibs? And I would say in their mainline pens, yes. But here are three examples of a, a low-end pen that they made. I think it's still around. It can be as low as a few dollars. These two are 494s, and they're piston fillers. So it's a nice low-end piston fill pen. And this is the 322, which is a cartridge converter. They almost have the same cap on them, the same clip design. Let's focus in on that nib. The 494, we have an extra fine and a fine nib, which is nice that they give you those two choices. The fine one I had inked up, it did not really write well in my view. And here's that nib on the... 322. They have that similar design element in the middle. Marshmallow is something that was inscribed on the nib. These pens also look very similar to a, a Wing Song model. I'm trying to get that interesting nib engraving. So the 494 has that pilot style with that little wing or little foot, whatever you want to call it, on the back. Whereas the 322 is just more of a standard number five nib. You know, it's straight. And again, they're consistent in their engraving, but they didn't put a size on the 322 nib. Not a pen I fell in love with, but I bought it because I needed to fill out my pen BBS collection and they were only a few dollars. So you might say I saved the best for last. This is that uh, pen BBS fan edition limited model. They made like a hundred and forty some of them and they individually numbered them. So this is number two of 145, if my eyes are working right. And this also has a nicely engraved nib, and that was part of the design of this pen, which the fans got to participate in. Yes, there's a phoenix there, which I think is quite appropriate. 
And this nib also writes extremely well. So that concludes our review of all the kind of great nibs that Pen BBS has used and interesting how they've done different engravings on different nibs for different reasons. So I'm impressed. You know, not only do they make great pens, but they also cater to those collectors who like limited editions and things of that nature. So we've come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you are safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens. Maybe you have some Pen BBS pens. If you have a nib that I didn't show, let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for something new and something different. And I don't think I have all of them. Uh, I think uh, there's that pink 456 that also had a unique nib on it that's still, I think, up on Etsy, but I don't really like that finish, so I'm not going to get the pen just for the nib. This is the end of the video. Hold on. You may have thought, are we going to see any writing examples of these nibs that have been shown in the video? And yeah, you are. So this extra fine nib I just took out of that nib charm, stuck a converter on the back, put some Pilot Blue Black in it so we could write with it. I thought you'd like to see this setup that I use to test out nibs without worrying about getting a pen involved. So to me what these examples here show is that the extra fine nib is pretty much an extra fine. It's certainly thinner than these two fine nib examples I used here. And here's two of the medium nib examples. They're all different inks. Don't worry about the inks. This is the one that had Pilot Blue Black because I just filled it up. One of the things that I've noticed over time is that there are some fine nibs that write more like mediums. And the mediums are not... You know, they're a good Western medium, but they're not as medium as, as some nibs might be. And the other thing you'll notice is they're pretty wet. All of these nibs are pretty wet, laying down a decent amount of ink. This is that Noodler's uh, Black Swan and Australian Rose. This is that uh, Pen BBS Blue. This is uh, Culliver's Photon. And uh, I don't know which one this is. So this is just to show you what the nibs could write like. And we're going to say bye. See you in the next video.